Hi folks, thanks for watching. So what I wanted to do with this video real quick, let everyone know what's uh, what's coming based on different questions and comments that I receive on uh, my channel, even though we, re we are a relatively small channel, uh, but I still want to continue spreading the word of the Akia renovation uh, here in rural Japan and the different possibilities for other folks to uh, to undertake such a task like ours. So a couple of topics that I wanted to discuss here in the near future and just give everyone a heads up what's coming so that you can go ahead and send me some comments and questions is uh, one, one obviously everyone, well many people are interested in the cost because we did a very extensive renovation consisting of, uh, you know, from the floor up, uh, the well, I should say really from the slab uh, foundation up. Uh, the other thing is there's, uh, you know, Japan is not the easiest country to uh, become a resident or obtain residency. So the different ways to do that. Um, I am probably a little bit uh, different case. You have uh, a lot of folks that come here and teach English and uh, seek employment that way and ultimately they make it into different industries. In my case, uh, I work for the U.S. government and then I am under what is called SOFA status, which is a status of, of forces agreement. And I want to talk a little bit more about that and how you can go about in finding different jobs throughout different military installations, U.S. military installations uh, specifically. So this is probably more geared towards uh, U.S. citizens. Um, the other thing that I want to do is a compare and contrast of um, this house which is built in 1975, extensively renovated with uh, a lot of uh, modern appliances. It has a very modern feel but kind of the cottage look uh, compared to the house that we just vacated which was a, uh, a house built in the 1990s uh, during the uh, uh, bubble in Japan the economy collapsed and a lot of houses were built very cheaply and it's kind of where they come uh, you hear about in Japan that uh, houses are kind of temporarily that they build them for 30 years and then they tear them down and they start all over right and this there's a lot of truth to that um, so I wanted to do a walkthrough with this house and compare it to the other one and do a walkthrough of that one is kind of show you the different features but also what I wanted to do in this quick video is talk about something that's going on in my hometown in, in Mexico uh, specifically is called Aquila uh, Jalisco in Mexico so for those of you that don't know I mean I was born in, in the United States but I was raised in Mexico and uh, so there's a uh, a civil peaceful protests going on in my hometown uh, where they are blocking the trucks of the blueberry farmers and avocado farmers that are coming into town and the reason why they're doing that is because one is uh, very harmful to the environment uh, but they're also uh, extracting a lot of water and then therefore the local people to include my mother still lives there um, there's uh, water is very scarce uh, and all kinds of other problems that 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 comes along with this but it, it, the reason why I kind of want to talk about that is because uh, I'm getting ready to plant some blueberries here in my property and um, but yet and the reason why I'm planting blueberries is because I really love blueberries so when I go to the store here in Japan I get blueberries and in the package it says this comes from Mexico in Jalisco, Mexico, which is the area that I grew up. And the first time I saw this package, I was actually kind of uh, impressed. I was like, wow, these are coming all the way from my hometown. But now that I'm seeing really the second, third order effects of that, you know, kind of makes me wonder, you know, do I, should I boycott uh, and not buy products that are coming from Mexico because it's impacting my hometown. Uh, the other thing is avocados. Uh, the best avocados you could get here at the store come from Mexico, and uh, and again, a lot of the there's that's kind of a new thing in my hometown, avocado trees. Um, but yet, I love avocados, and they, I, I don't think I can grow them here, unfortunately. You know, and then right behind here in my backyard, 
there's an abundance of water so what i'm going to do right now is just kind of walk you around and kind of show you the status of my different trees so if you could give me some advice i appreciate it too is uh, we have persimmons kiwi figs and uh, chestnuts are growing up over there too um so i just kind of want to show you what it looks like but we have an abundance of water right here which is very shameful but yet we we're we're buying uh you know these these fruits and vegetables that are coming all the way from mexico coming all the way across the ocean i'm kind of in a dilemma there so but uh anyway so back to the three topics that i want to talk about uh in the near future about the sofa status the compare and contrast and and the cost of this renovation um please send me your questions so i can start formulating them and start thinking of some ideas of uh what's to come so uh if you like what you see please hit subscribe and like and share and uh, please comment below so i can start capturing that so yeah let's go ahead and walk around real quick so for those of you that have not uh tuned in before uh, so this is uh the house that we bought last year uh, around august of 2022 right now it's august 2023 so for the past year, we did very extensive renovations. So I just want to uh, give uh, everyone an idea about what we're talking about here. But uh, so yeah, so these are the two blueberry uh, bushes that a friend of mine gave to me that I'm going to plant once it cools down a little bit. Um, but yeah, so blueberries grow really well here. So again, there's no reason why I should be buying um, products that are harming, um, again, my hometown. Uh, <laughs> But yet, uh, in a way, it also brings employment, so I'm not quite sure about that. So, you know what, let's go ahead and walk up this way so everyone can see kind of what it looks like. And look at these beautiful clouds. It's uh, rainy season right now. Uh, the fog over there looks absolutely gorgeous. So, uh, right here in our backyard, I just spent some uh, days, I should say, um, uh, weed whacking all up in this area but uh, still so much more work to do here in a minute I'm gonna go up to where the chestnut trees are at and uh, continue digging the um, vines out from the roots because that's the only way to really get to them all these persimmons are growing really nicely um, all these trees right here they were covered with the vines last year this time here they are beautiful and i have at least i don't know five or six of these trees and uh i believe the way you you can eat them also you can air dry them you kind of hang them and air dry them so if you know how to do that please let me know oh the rice is starting to uh you can see the the rice growing right there this is our neighbors of course i'm not a rice farmer nor do i think i, I will ever become a rice farmer but look at those gorgeous mountains look at that let's go ahead and take the long walk by the chestnut trees and down to the kiwi tree and the fig tree and kind of show you what i'm talking about all this is my property and uh if you have not tuned in before uh for all of this what we just what we're walking through we paid around thirty-five thousand dollars for this the weed whacker I stopped up to here so you can see where the grass got kind of tall the reason why I stopped because now I'm, I'm I, I just need to get down here and pull all of this kuzu from the from the roots it's the only way that it gets all tangled up in my weed whacker so that's what I'm doing right now I did that for several hours the other day. Here's my pile. I mean, these, they're, these are evil looking vines. So yeah, here we have some chestnut trees. October or so is the season. And the mountains over there, the sky, the clouds, the mist, it's really pretty. But see, this is what I'm talking about, these vines. I mean, this is on the other side of the fence, so there's not much I can do other than jump over there and try to, but I have enough with my own. But yeah, they will start. Before you know it, this thing is gonna be over here, but I'm gonna cut it before it gets to that. Okay, so here we go. From the top view, 
this uh, kiwi tree. See how it does this year. Last year, by the time we moved in, uh, I think it was a little bit too late and everything, and way overgrown. I've been trying to pluck away the little puny kiwi, but there's still more, a whole lot more. You can see right there all over the ground, I just kind of cut, you know, like these little, little bitty ones, you know. I don't know, is this too much? Do I need to, you know, maybe leave two or three, kind of like what they do with apples? I don't know. But every time I, I throw one away, I kind of feel like I'm throwing away at least a dollar. So <laughs> it's so hard, uh, so hard to decide, you know. So, but yeah, I mean, look at them. It's full of kiwi. And here behind me, another persimmon tree. Full, full of it. It's full, 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 full. Look at all that. I'm going to end up giving away most of it. Here's another one. I've seen different, different size. And the, the leaves of this tree look a little bit different too. So you see this one. It's much smaller than this one here. I'm not quite sure what the difference is. And then here behind me, lots of figs. I love figs. That's it folks. Again, I just wanted to kind of give everyone a quick update on what's to come. And again, please leave your, send me your questions and comments so I can capture them. All right, folks, thanks a lot. Thanks for watching, and uh, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and uh, follow us along. All right, thanks. Bye.